Matt Hamilton, who used to be a top official at Ripple, made a big announcement on May 3rd, 2023. He talked about how Ripple is working on making a special XRP system for digital currencies issued by central banks. Hamilton talked about how crypto companies are now working to improve a private version of the XRP system for digital currencies backed by the government. He used to be the head of developer relations at Ripple, so what he said was important. But there were questions. Did the value of XRP on this secret record match what people thought it was worth? It could have been something else. A well-known venture capitalist firm called Black Swan Capitalist said they had seen this secret ledger. They even put up pictures of XRP's unbelievable $327,000 price on this hard-to-find market which started a tornado of rumors. As always, welcome back to Money Side, the place to go for all things XRP. If you're new, don't forget to click subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on all of our XRP talks. Having fun with my stuff? Give that thumbs up some love and let us know what you think in the comments. This news caused a huge debate about how much XRP really costs on this private forum and even whether the ledger exists at all. But this is where the story gets more complicated. We just now found a podcast piece that talked about the Republic of Paolo. Why does this matter? It's important to remember that Ripple and the Republic of Palo have worked together before, especially when they led the world's first stablecoin trial built on the XRP ledger. Theoretically, these parties should know about the XRP price on this mysterious ledger and other information about it. We solved this puzzle in today's episode. Get ready to see a video with the finance minister of the Republic of Palo in it. Keep your eyes open because he goes into a lot of detail about the public VS. Private argument. The base for their stablecoin and what XRP might be worth in the future. Let's watch the clip right away. The public XRP system was our choice, mostly because it is clear. It has always been very important for us to be clear about our goals and ongoing projects. So far, the journey has been satisfying, but it has also been hard. It's been pioneering work, a test, an experiment. Ripple's help has been very important in getting past these problems. At the end of the clip, it's clear. It was clear that the Republic of Palo's finance office put a high value on the public ledger because it was open to everyone. But their statement doesn't say for sure or not that there is a secret ledger, leaving the door open for what might happen. A lot of people are interested in how much XRP is on this alleged private ledger. We got a short piece of audio from another show, which we will play soon. This will show how much XRP is worth on this secret site for speculation. A common idea says that the public and private ledgers might eventually come together. If this is true, it could mean that their prices are the same, which would give us an average. But this is still just a guess until there is strong proof. David Short, who most people know as Ripple's CTO, was there when these talks took place. Let us look into the XRP secret ledger to find out what the expected price is. Of course, it's not set in stone, but it gives you an idea of how much the secret ledger might value XRP. I've said it before and I'll say it again, there is a secret ledger because it is so complicated. It's not something that appeared out of nowhere. This is something I saw for myself on a live YouTube video from Japan. From that five-minute clip, we also learned that there is a public record. Now comes the real test. How do they tell the difference between notes on the public and secret ledgers for XRP? It's impossible to say enough about how hard this job is. In all of these details, let's not lose sight of my main point. There will come a time when the lines between private and public ledgers become less clear. There will soon be a merger. But before that day comes, we need strong, clear rules. This makes sure there is no confusion when they work together in the future. From what I can tell, this secret ledger is still just being tested. A big twist has been added to this story by the Bank of Japan, known as SBI as well. They just recently said they were going to start lending XRP. This is a big deal. It clearly shows that big names in the business world are very interested in XRP. The bank's plan to use XRP for institutional transactions is emphasized by the start of this new lending service. This also makes me wonder why Japan would start lending XRP if they don't think the coin will play a big role in the future. When you think about the Bank of Japan's strategic move, the point of view I'm putting forward becomes really convincing. They're now lending XRP after doing a lot of tests to make sure that both individuals and institutions want it. It's not just a loaning thing. It's a smart move by banks to take advantage of the new Bitcoin trend. XRP is interesting for more than just its potential value, it looks like it will be a useful tool for large-scale cross-border transactions between businesses and customers. A big paradigm change is happening right now. Financial institutions do not only hold XRP, they're putting it into practical utility projects so that it can be used for easy transfers between institutions and payments across borders. Not just in Japan is this a one-time trend. Global banking giants are getting together. One example is how Ripple and MasterCard have made their relationship official. MasterCard does a lot more than just make cards. 
It handles a huge number of payments and has a huge network of other companies that work with it. With this relationship, Ripple isn't just linking up with MasterCard's main business unit, a but also all of its many companies, such as Fluency, Consensus, ESAC, Davereth, and many more that I haven't even thought of. Working together doesn't just mean that they agree with each other. It emphasizes wealth and the size that could be possible. There is a lot of talk that isn't unfounded that MasterCard's partnership with Ripple was aimed at using Ripple as the main payment method from the start. To be clear, what I'm about to say is guesswork or theory. I am giving you all the parts and pieces. Thanks for the news and information, but please keep in mind that my idea of why MasterCard might have teamed up with XRP is just that an idea. They did work together with Ripple. This is also a known fact Ripple and its architecture uses on-demand liquidity, which is mostly driven by the XRP cryptocurrency and its ledger. This means that if they use Ripplinit, they are automatically using XRP. So if MasterCard decides to let people pay with Ripplinit, they will automatically use the XRP system. Even though this is just a guess, it shows how important such a relationship could be and what it might mean. Please keep in mind that I'm not a qualified financial manager. The information in these movies is only meant to be entertaining. Before making any financial decisions, I always tell my viewers to do their own study and talk to professionals. Thanks for listening. Do not forget to hit the follow button and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you turn on alerts so you know right away when I post something new. In the next movie, I can't wait to catch up with you. Be careful.